outside, he laid him up, he looked for the gap, and he burst through it. Oh, I think he's done it! What, what a finish! Unbelievable! This is good racing, ladies and gentlemen, here. Look at you, boys! The crowd are going bananas again for Liverpool 5-1. Big warm welcome to all the Pirates TV viewers. I'm Scott Mitchell, your presenter and commentator for this evening's meeting. And 2024 is finally here. We've had a terrible, terrible time with the weather here on the South Coast. But today, it looks to be lovely for racing. And we bring you tonight the Paul Wessex Marine Pirates versus the Oxford Cheetahs in the BSN Series Southern section. So, what's been going on during the winter? Well... The teams have been told they've got to build a team on 38 points and so all the riders have been chasing around finding clubs that's been going on in the winter and now we're finally here the clubs are all set up and ready to go the track here has had a few changes here on bends one and two at Wimborne road there's slightly more banking on the bends one and two to try and produce more racing and that's a good thing for me i think and also they've brought in lots of new shale from wolverhampton so 60 tonnes of shell have been bought, 30 tonnes have been put down over the winter. The Russell brothers have been here, the track curators have been helping out. So the, the track on Wednesday at Press and Practice looked as smooth as a baby's bottom. So what's happened with the team? Well, Paul have retained three riders from their team of last year. So there's a bit of regularity to what they're doing. And of course, the only thing that they do want to forget is the way that last season ended is three finals and we only won one of them so everybody seems pretty determined to to start this season on a high and get things moving on this traditional good friday meeting so oxford well what a success for oxford had been uh, to return so quickly make the semi-finals of the league last year absolutely magic and this year they've gone on oxford now running three sides in all three leagues of british speedway it, it really is such a success story as regards to their team, they retained six of their seven from last year. And they made the semi-finals of those, so that's going to be good for them to, to retain that atmosphere within the camp. They are a young team, and they're going to be relying on Sam Masters and Scott Nichols to be getting those young guys through it. But we cannot wait to see what happens here this evening. Let's over to head over to the pits and find some people that know what they're talking about and let us know exactly what's going to happen this evening. So, the season's finally here, Neil Middleditch. What, what, where do we go from here? All the talking stops, it's all about on the track now. Yeah, exactly, and I'm glad to see we've got a fine evening for a change after the weather we've had lately. But yeah, no, it's uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's another season, here we go. Let's uh, hope we can go a bit better than last year. It's like five months in the planning, the riders and getting it all together. Is it just finally a, a case of, thank God we're here now, let's get out on track and, and show what we got? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And luckily, we had, some of the boys had a few laps the other day. They've done a lot of work on the track during the closed season. Um, and it's looking really good. And hopefully tonight we're going to get some good racing. Yeah, a bit of extra banking on Ben 1 and 2. Was, was that sort of something that the club felt needed to be done? Yeah, I think because sometimes you've got a bit of an adverse camber and you sort of get up, up too close to the fence, you sort of get off the race line. Um, and, and the dirt on practice day worked really well. I mean, it didn't clog up, it didn't sort of get all lumpy and horrible, it re really, and it didn't grade it during the practice at all, and it, and, it, and it performed really, really well. So hopefully it'll hold up you know, a bit different with 15 heats. I'm, I suppose most of our Pirates viewers would have, would have watched it on Pirates TV. That was all live stream, which was, was a new thing for us. Um, you know, it looked as smooth as silk the track. Yeah, no, it did. It did. Everybody was tough to bits. I mean, it's a little bit going into turn three there, but that's always a way. They just avoided that because of the weather we'd had. I mean, it was amazing. We even got to ride on it. You know, we got here at one o'clock and it was, you know, I said, there's no way. And then come four o'clock, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was rideable. We've retained three riders from the 2023 squad. They have a big part to play with the four new guys. Yeah, that's right. You know, they've got to pass on their knowledge and experience, haven't they, really? You know, you, you sort of look at, look at Ben Captain, you think he, he's only sort of been here a few years, but he's captain now, and I'm sure he'll be a good captain too. And obviously Richard, uh, all the experience he's got to pass on to, to, to the youngsters in the team. And uh, obviously Max and Sam are, new, well, Sam's ridden here a couple of times, but I know Max, I was glad, I was glad he got out for a practice uh, the other day. So, yeah, I mean, we've just got to be patient with him, that's all. 
I think I think that's the, the sort of anybody that knows Speedway knows that we had to build on 38 point average. Every club is in the same boat at reserve, aren't they? Really? Yeah, that's right. No, I mean the trick has always been, you know, which we we've, we've done fairly successfully over the last few, you know, many seasons, is, is is trying to start the season with a team of riders who are going to improve. Um, you know, I think there's, you know, Ben's hit the ground running, had a couple of good starts to the season. So's Richard and Zach's had some good ones. So, you know, they're looking good. Um, we've just got to, hopefully, that the youngsters and obviously Tobias is new, new to Paul. But um, you know, we've got the experience in the team, we've got the knowledge, and if they, they can just work as a unit, we'll we'll be fine. The team is built with a big top four, isn't it? And 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 they're going to have to help out the three. And, I, and I, like you say, I, I believe that they can improve their averages. And I, and I think it looks a really steady side. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm, you know, Sam Hagen, I was very impressed with what I've seen from Sam down here a couple of times. I know he said by his own admission, uh, and Max both said it, they both said they're not the greatest gators. Um, but hopefully we can work on that. And, uh, and I think, you know, once they get you know, fresh air, they're going to be hard to catch. Well, let's get the first one out of the way, Neil, and um, hopefully it's a Pirates win. Hopefully so. It'd be nice to start with the win, yeah, for sure. Cheers, Scotty. So I'm here with Peter Schroke, the uh, Oxford team manager, Oxford Speedway. Everybody in Speedway is talking about you as a club. I mean, what a phenomenal year you're going to have running three teams. Yeah, it's going to be flat out, you know. It's, um, yeah, we're the brave ones out here. So, and, uh, you know, we weren't going to give up the National League. You know, very important for us to have that acad academy feeling for the club. And, you know, the championship obviously done what, they, what we done last year. And to come in with the premiership as well, yeah, we've got uh, treble bubble. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's looking really positive. Crowds are really good. You know, the response has been really great. So, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to a good season. Well, when we look back, and I, I was following it on, on Facebook and watching the fans go around, digging the weeds out the track and, and out the... St I mean, to go from there to where you are in two such short years, it's just, it's just incredible. It is. I mean, I'm a bit of a believe in fate, you know, and I mean, this is our third season and we've got three teams, you know, and, and, and it came from nowhere, like you said, you know, the, the, the phenomenal work which has been done there by all the volunteers and obviously the promotion and one thing and another, it, it, it's incredible. It, it is a bit of a fairy tale story, really, and we ever so often we still have to pinch ourselves, but, you know, we're very positive as a club going forward. It's not just about the winning and the losing, it's about, like, building good foundations for Speedway again, and that's what we're trying to do, you know, and uh, if we lead in from the front on that, we're doing the right thing, and uh, you know, hopefully, other people sort of take notice and and make the job, uh, you know, make make the sport grow again, which it should be. I think you develop yourself into everybody's second favourite club. So if you're a sport supporter, you still want Oxford to do well as a club because of the way that you're putting into Speedway. It's great. And also, with the team this year, you retain six riders from last year. I mean, that's special in itself. Yeah, it's very unusual. And uh, as soon as I saw, you know, what the point limit was, it was obviously very sad to lose Louis Kerr. You know, he's one of my favourites as well. And I've got many favourites, but he is, you know, he was great for us. But unfortunately, the point limit didn't allow us to keep him. But as soon as I saw what was going on, there was no reason to change. You know, I mean, as far as we're concerned, we finished second in the league just behind you. You're not on points. And, you know, and then we went into the playoffs and sometimes in the playoffs you, you've got to have that little bit of luck and it wasn't on our side. So the boys haven't done nothing wrong at all. So why change it when, when it's working, you know? And uh, it, it helped us during the winter. They all know each other, you know? It's, uh, you know, and to put faith into these riders knowing that they can come back the second year to a club, you know, it's, you know, I don't have to tell them what to do. They know exactly what they got to do. And they will appreciate that. I mean, we stand on the outside, but it's a sport that's very cutthroat for the riders. You know, if you're not kind of doing it, you get moved on. And to have a club back you like that and have you back again, I mean, it must make them feel great as well. Oh, that's the whole idea. You as a sportsman, you know yourself, you know, it's all about the feel good factor. You know, and when we feel good, you don't just turn bad overnight. It's usually what's going on around you. So we sort like, you know, we keep that continuance uh, going. And, uh, you know, like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed working with those lads last year. And and, you know, obviously we've got the Spires as well now, which is a, pretty much a new team. So it gives me great uh, pleasure to have, you know, a team where they know exactly how I work. Then I know how they work. So it's a lot easier. So because running three teams is not easy, trust me. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I know how Dan feels running one team here. So I think he has ultimate admiration. Um, you know, the, the two big guys, you've got your, your one and your five, you retain <coughs> Sam and Scott have got, big jobs to do with the young guns that you have in the team because there is potential there they can improve their averages and it's going to take those two to help them out week in week out 
to help them move along in the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, last year we had, uh, you know, we obviously had uh, Louis as well. So, you know, so they all know what they got to do there. You know, they're, 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 they're solid. You know, we finished, like I said, nobody gave us a chance with that team last year. You know, and we finished second in the league. That's how I look at it. Never mind about the playoffs. When it comes to consistency, we were there and thereabouts with you guys. You know, and obviously everybody had to make some changes, you included. You know, uh, when you look at the reserves and one thing or another, you know, they're all new guys. And I'm really pleased to see people like Sam and Max in the, in, in, in the sport now because everybody who knows me knows that, you know, I'm very much for that because, you know, people talking about the past all the time. If we don't look after the future, we won't have a past. And, and I think everybody's waking up to that now. And, uh, and it's great to see. And it's not just in this country where we get recognised. It's places like Poland and one thing, they're all sort of picking, perking up their ears and thinking, hang on a second, what they're doing in England. So, uh, yeah, I'm really proud to be part of that, to be quite honest. The 38-point average meant that that was always going to happen at reserve with every club. And that, that's got to be, a, like you say, it's a massive plus for the sport in the UK. A hundred percent. You know, where are these young guys going? You know, you can't just keep bringing new blood in all the time and spending, you know, you, you've got to grow from within. And, and, and I think that's what's happening this year. When you look around all the teams, you know, there's quite a lot of young riders where last year they've been told, oh, you know, ready. When are you ready? You tell me. You know, it's like unless you put them out there and mix them, and you are the people you mix with. You know, these guys are going to excel being around by the better riders and it's going to make them better sportsmen. And that's what it's all about. Well, we can't wait to see how it hangs out tonight. We love having you back here. You're my favourite guy to chat to. Honestly, we wish you all the very best and uh, Oxford Speedway the best for the rest of the season. Thank you very much. We love coming here, but sometimes I drive out here with a few tears as well, so hopefully tonight's going to be a bit different. <laughs> So we'll move on then to the team lineups for this evening's meeting. We'll start with the Paul Pirates. At number one, Richard Lawson, a fan's favourite, the Rocket Man returns. The Pirates asset loves this club and says he wants to stay as long as he can. At number two, Tobias Thompson, shock signing from the promotion, struggled in 2019 when he last rode in the British League, so there's a question mark over his inclusion. But the fans will all tell you, in Matt and Dan Ford, we trust. Number three, Tom Brennan, a late addition to the Pirates. Performances for Glasgow in last year's final meant he became when he became available, the Pirates wanted him. At number four, Zach Cook. The fans all wanted this guy back. Got better as the season went on in 2023. Expect to see this guy push in 24 for a heat leader's berth. At number five, his brother, Ben Cook. Dominant at number three in 2023 for the Pirates. Like brother Zach, he's in the pool fans' hearts. Rewarded with the captain's armband as well for 2024. At number six, Sam Hagen. He impressed last year on a visit to Wimborne Road with the Swindon Select side. The Fords got their man and a family steeped in Speedway pedigree. And number seven, Max Perry. This 16-year-old has the pedigree on the grass and last year debuted in the National Development League. A bad crash ended his season in 2023, but Pirates promotion feel he can bounce back from that, and that's why they've signed him. So we move on to the Oxford Cheaters. And at number one, Sam Masters. They retain their big hit in number one. The former Pirate always goes well at Wimborne Road. At number two, Henry Atkins. A rider progressing quickly in British Speedway. Loyalty from the Cheaters to retain him He'll look to pay them back over 2024. At number three, Cameron Heaps. The Aussie-born rider had a poor 2023 by comparisons to previous seasons, but a five-point average, it could turn out to be a steal for the Cheaters. At number four, Jordan Jenkins. Young Brit, another one on the up, has raced in the top league on British Speedway, and we should see him, it should see him in good stead for this championship campaign. At number five, Scott Nicholl. Captain's aside, loves Wimborne Road, always attacks this track. Dare I say it, the old fella has a vital part to play with the young guns and his team. At number six, Luke Killeen. Started last two seasons with injuries, and that's hampered his progress a little, but a fit Killeen will score very useful points down at reserve berth for the Cheetahs. And at number seven, Ashton Bowen. He started Speedway in 2022, a former British motocross champion. It's one of the British Speedway's hottest prospects. 
So, welcome to the live broadcast here at Wimborne Road this evening. It's a Good Friday meeting, the traditional meeting that happens here, generally against a local club. And here's some shots from earlier today from the drone. A rare sunny day in Dorset, I may add. We have not had many of those in the last couple of weeks. Scotty, it's Rob here, and maybe it's just a chance to uh, say well done to the track guys who've been working tirelessly over the course of the uh, last 48 hours. And uh, earlier, of course, at the end of last season and during the uh, early part of March to import all the new shale from the Wolverhampton circuit, the spare shale from Wolves, and uh, bank it into our own Paul Pirates Wimborne Road circuit. Indeed, yeah. Lots of work had gone on in the off-season. Everybody thinks that once they shut the doors in October that nothing happens here at the club. You couldn't be further from the truth. That's when the hard work happens. So, we're going to have you over to our track announcer, Nigel Lee Hyde, to talk us through. As he introduces the Oxford team, a few Oxford supporters have travelled down to Wimborne Road to see their boys' first meeting of the season. You can see led out there by Sam Masters. How big was it for the Cheetahs to retain him this year? We know he's going to be around that 9 or 10 point average for the year. He's going to be the bulk of the scoring everywhere they go. As you've probably realised already this evening, our broadcast will be slightly different to usual. If you've been and joined us before, uh, we're a cameraman down this evening, unfortunately. So uh, the pit cam will not be in operation this evening uh, but the plus with that is I do get Rob Dyer to stand next to me uh, as, as a second helper and presenter alongside me so all the action will be from one camera unfortunately this evening but you will not miss a thing and a great way to start the 2024 season Molly. yep so we'll hand you over to Nigel Lee High and he'll take you through the runners and riders for this evening from strength to strength they managed to return this year almost unchanged after finishing just one point behind the Pirates in the table in 2023. Well, they'll come to take this year in all three leagues, all three tiers of the British Speedway. And they'll be offering some stiff opposition tonight as we embark on the defence of the BSN Trophy. Time to meet them then. Once again, please, your appreciation for the Oxford Mark Cheetahs. Number seven in the lineup, the one new face in 2024. He's a 2023 British Youth Champion, Ashton Bowden. <laughs> Number six, after a successful debut year with the Cheetahs, he's the first of the returning squad, Luke Killeen. <laughs> Number five, full of experience, ever reliable and a natural choice to return as captain, Scott Nichols. <laughs> Number four, he improved every step of last year to over a point to his average, it's Jordan Jenkins. <laughs> Number three, very solid, 2023, got in the ticket back to Sandy Lane this year, Cameron Hicks. Number two, with some capable scoring from the tough number two slot last term. Back in there again, Henry Atkins. And at number one, building up a near unbeatable reputation here at Wimbledon Road. He loves it. Watch out for Sam Marshall. All right, those of you wearing the blue and white, time to make some noise as the boys in the skull and crossbones open their accounts for 2024, the sights are firmly set, first of all, on the same the BSN title. The first order of business 
in 2024. Play your part, join in the support as we lift off the roof for your very own Paul Westwick Marine Power! Yeah, another quick look down here at the starting line. They were here on Wednesday, of course, for press and practice. Uh, several of the boys getting their first look at Wimbledon Road. And uh, during the winter, of course, a lot of track work has taken place. A lot of new surface has been put onto the track since we were here in October. So uh, all the boys getting their first real glance at uh, Paul Speedway in earnest tonight as they line up for their first fixture of 2024. All right, we're going to get the boys back in line, ready for their introductions. Starting out at this end of the line at number seven. The promotion refer to him as potentially the best two-pointer in the league. We'll find out. Max Perry! <laughs> At number six, joining the Pirates with his sights set firmly on the future, Sam Hagen! <laughs> number five, proud to wear the captain's armband for 2024, Ben Cook! Number four and a crucial part of the formidable Pirates top four, Zach Cook. So much potential is our new third heat leader at number three, Tom Brennan. Number two could be a surprise packet, but with bags of determination, Tobias Thompson. And the top point scorer in 2023 returns to number one, Richard Lawson. Got <laughs> so our two captains joining me down here on the start line. Scott Nichols for the Chiefs, Ben Cook for the Pirates. Scott's going to call. Heads he calls. It is heads. And Scott gets called. He's going with two and four for the Chiefs if he won. So there we go, the formalities out of the way, and it's two and four, Scott Nichols takes for the Cheetahs. Surprise for me that, usually people come here and take one and three, Rob. Yeah, agree there, Scotty. I would have thought that they'd have gone one and three, but of course, uh, doing what uh, Scotty's done, it does put his young reserves in heat number two off the uh, inside gates, one and three, and uh, I think those reserves on both sides are going to be very, very key in the way in which this meeting pans out. And we've got uh, two very young riders there, uh, with Perry and uh, Ashley Bogen, both 16 years old and uh, looking to make their way in uh, professional leagues this season. Uh, they could be uh, key players as the night unfolds. Yeah, absolutely. I think it shows experience with Scott as a captain as well to think about Heat 2 as much as thinking about Heat 1. He has Sam Masters, and Sam will gate off of any gate, won't he? They certainly will, and uh, whilst I'm a little bit surprised that uh, Oxford have gone that way, of course, Heat 15 was an option for them, and uh, as many people are talking on the terraces here, they think this is going to be a really close-run meeting, and uh, certainly Heat 15 choice of gates may have been an advantage, but uh, it's all hypothetical for now. We know uh, what's going to happen in heat number one and we head off into racing yeah we, we talk about this 38 point average that everybody had to team build to rob and, and clubs are feeling and fans are feeling that they're probably a little bit weaker than the reserve than they have been in past years but it's it's the same for all eight teams they've all got the same problem of filling that reserve berth but i think long term as peter schrock said in his interview earlier this is great for uk speedway yeah certainly is and to, to bring in the youngsters and give them the opportunity to race elbow to elbow with the big boys is only going to be, be a, to an ideal development opportunity for them and of course we do take a doff, doff our hats to Oxford running three teams and the National League team as their stepping stone to uh, bigger and better things is a real big step for the uh, Cheetahs management and uh, I for one hope that it pays dividends for them uh, not quite uh, picking up the championship title uh, we could uh, do with the 
with Cheetahs in second place behind the Pirates, but uh, a long, long way to go before we get to that particular stage in the meeting. Exactly right. We're just being, you know, the weather we've had the last few days, Rob, we're, we're just to be pleased out on track this evening. Yes, uh, amazing really because uh, I was here on Wednesday for the uh, press and practice day and uh, at two o'clock there was no chance of getting riders on track and at four o'clock once the press conference had finished the sun had come up, the wind had got up and it had dried out the circuit good enough to let the uh, pirate riders who wanted to get out there and actually sample Wimborne Road Shale and then we move along yesterday, terrible weather, torrential rain. I was uh, half expecting this one to be off, but uh, we look at the track at 11 o'clock this morning and the wind's up, it's drying out, and the drone shots have shown earlier on just how good the condition of the circuit is with the uh, extra surface now on there. The boys have uh, worked their wonders and uh, we're set fair for a great meeting. Absolutely, it's, it's just what we want to see. We want to see some good racing and some good passing and, and entertainment, which is what the sport is all about. And we have the riders to do so here in these two lineups, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely have. And uh, come the end of the year, these two teams are certainly going to be up there uh, knocking on the door. But you look across the whole of the uh, championship this year, very hard to uh, find a, a team that's got a weak link in it. You might say that the reserves are going to be crucial, but every team, as we said earlier on, are going to be carrying a youngster, and uh, maybe it's the youngster who takes the biggest steps who will help their team towards trophies at the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely, and we've just panned round there, and we've seen a, we've got an absolute bumper crowd in again today, tonight, for the Good Friday meeting. The car parks, the two car parks out the back are absolutely full. There's standing room only. It's uh, it's a superb meeting, this Good Friday meeting. It's all, always packs a punch. And uh, you tell me Speedway's dead in this town when you see this many people in here. Well, it certainly is. And, and uh, there's a great contingent down from uh, Sandy Lane to support the Cheetahs here tonight. A big welcome to them. And uh, like all of us, we're hoping to see uh, 15 action-packed heats of great Speedway uh, with a nice tight outcome at the end and everybody going home very very happy yeah absolutely and uh, on that note you know welcome to any oxford fans who are buying pirates tv or watching through pirates tv for the first time thank you very much we're a little bit depleted tonight with one camera down but we will bring you all the track action here we go the lineup for heat number one on the in, in gate one on the inside in blue is Tobias Thompson for the Pirates in gate two in yellow is Henry Atkins for the Cheetahs in gate three in red is the Rocket Man Richard Lawson for the Pirates and on the outside in white is Sam Masters the number one for the Oxford Cheetahs Masters is the danger man here you expect to see Lawson and Masters be battling it out out front As we said earlier, I didn't expect, I don't think Richard Lawson thought he would be getting a chance once they won the toss to be inside Sam Masters. And look at Masters, he's already angled to the corner. As the tapes go up on heat one in the first race of the season, and away we go. <laughs> it's Thomason and Lawson go around the inside of Masters. Masters drifts slightly wide. Thomason holds on to third place, got a little bit slippy in that first corner. Got excited when he was out front, but now Lawson's out front and seems to be pulling away. But Masters won't let this go. He'll put the hammer down now and chase Lawson. Tobias Thompson is not being dropped by Masters. He's right there, looking good. In blue for the Pirates. The Rocket Man's out front, he's got one lap to go, he takes the last lap flag. Henry Atkins at the back, got a little bit squeezed at the start he did and never really recovered. But the Pirates fans will go crazy as the Rocket Man comes over, it's red, white, blue and yellow as they come over the line. A superb first win of the first race of the season for Richard Lawson. The Rocket Man comes through.
to take the win and he will take the plaudits here from the fans as he comes out back straight. He didn't quite make the start, but I think Tobias made a hole for him and he went through it lovingly. So it's a 4-2 heat score. It's the result of heat number one. And it's Richard Lawson who takes the three points in red for the Pirates. In second was Sam Masters. Got a little bit bulked on the first turn. He was in white for the Cheaters. In third, a valuable point for Tobias Thompson in blue for the Pirates. And at the back was Henry Atkins for the Cheaters. So, our heat score was 4-2. And the match score after heat one is 4-2 in the favour of the Pirates. Two minutes, two minutes is on our referee Christina Turnbull looking to get on with it here this one the reserves heat heat two we spoke about these guys these are the young guys coming through the system getting their chance in championship racing Great for the fans to see these new faces. And I, for one, are really pleased with this 38 point team building. I think this is going to give these guys a chance. And here we go, we're going into heat two. In gate one in white, it's Luke Killeen for the Cheaters. In gate two in red is Sam Hagen for the Pirates. In gate three in yellow is Aston Bojan for the the Cheaters and in gate four in blue is Max Perry for the Pirates. I think all the fans are really interested. This is a really, really even heat. Obviously Sam Hagen in red. Part of the Hagen dynasty that's come through Speedway. Grandfather Alf. Father Martin. Just checking for where the lights are there. Start Marshall Colin. We now call the riders in. Here we go, the takes her up on heat two. It's a good one on the inside from Luke Killeen. The guys are drifting a bit wide. It's Killeen out front being chased by. Sam Masters and now Ashton Bojan is having an attack on Max at the back. Max Perry, we've got two races in one here. Colleen looking good out front, rider in white for the Cheaters. Sam Hagen taking chase. Max Perry looking good there in second, got to stay on it. Because Ashton Bojan looking good behind him, has just had a good turn. They headed to the last lap. And it all came from the start for Luke Killeen. He goes out, looks like bar mechanical failure, he's gonna win, he won. So as they come over line, it's white, red, blue, and yellow. Final their feet in the number two, the third race, Luke Killeen leading the pack home for the- A good win. For Luke Killeen and a good start to his season. That will give him confidence no end. So here how we finished. In first, in white was Luke Killeen for the Cheaters. He gets the three points. In second was Sam Hagen. He picks up a couple in red for the Pirates. In third, and a valuable third and the one point goes to Max Perry in blue. And in fourth, Ashton Bojan in yellow for the Cheaters. The heat result was three apiece and the match score after two heats, seven to the Pirates and five to the Cheaters. What we see from the action here was a good start on the inside from Killeen in white, pushed everybody out. Sam Hagen then sort of bumped into the side of Bojan and Bojan left the gap round the outside but for Max Perry to get round, so 
Now we head to Heat 3, sponsored by BIS, BIAS Technologies. The rider on the inside in blue is that Cook for the Pirates. The rider in white is Cameron Heaps for the Cheaters. The rider in red is Tom Brennan for the Pirates. And the rider in yellow on gate four is Jordan Jenkins for the Cheaters. Jordan Jenkins had a few appearances last year in the top league and that will see him in good stead for this year. He is one rapidly rising star, Jordan Jenkins in yellow for the Cheaters. Showed flashes of brilliance at times last year. We know what you get from Zach Cook. Tom Brennan had a great meeting here for Glasgow in the final last year against the Pirates, which is what probably when he became available made the Pirates promotion go for him. Here we go, start of heat three. And away we go, it looks like a good one from the Pirates boys. Brennan made a beaut, Zach made a beaut as well, off a one. Here comes Jenkins around the outside, he looks up to cut underneath. But it's Pirates after the first lap in positions one and two. Tom Brennan out front with his first ride. Then the skull and crossbones in red. He's being followed home by his partner, Zach Cook in blue. Jordan Jenkins is there in yellow. And at the back in white is Cameron Heaps. But it's all about the Pirates front two. And how quick does Tom Brennan look here? And the number three race jacket. Really looking good out there. We've got half a lap to go, the Pirates here. And it looks to be a maximum 5-1 heat score. As they come over the line, it's red, blue, yellow, and white. We have our first maximum heat win of the season. In heat three, from the Pirates duo. Here they come with a couple of wheelies. And here's a confirmation of our heat three result. It was a 5-1 heat advantage to the Pirates. It was three points for the rider in red for the Pirates in Tom Brennan. Second in blue was Zach Cook. He picks up a couple of points. Third was Jordan Jenkins, picks up a point for the Cheaters. And at the back, Cameron Heaps in white. So the progressive score and match score after three heats. It's 12 to the Pirates and six to the Cheaters. What a start on debut from Tom Brennan. Absolutely roared out the start. You see it here. After three bike lengths, he's just got his nose in front. Cuts in across Cameron Heaps, but not so far that he cut his partner off in Zach Cook. And that was pretty much, Jordan Jenkins gave it a big go around the outside there. Overlocked it, let Zach get away from him, and you can't afford to do that to Zach Cook here at Wimborne Road. He will clear off and leave you. So, we already have a rider change for Heat 4. There's a reserve change. Luke Colleen is coming in in yellow. For Ashton Bojan. So, Peter Schroek making moves straight away to try and get into this deficit. Good management from him. So, here we go. Heat 4, sponsored by Top Class Consultancy. In gate 1, in blue, is Max Perry for the Pirates. In gate 2, is Luke Colleen. He won first time out in yellow for the Cheaters. In gate 3, it's his first ride of the evening for Ben Cook, captain of the Pirates for 2024. And in gate 4, he faces opposition captain of the Oxford Cheaters in the form of Scott Nichols in white. Luke 
interesting. Nichols starting quite close to the right line there. He's obviously found a nice bit of grip on gate four. Remember, he chose for the Cheetahs to have gate four in heat one. Maybe he saw something out there. Nobody's out there starting right under the boards just yet. Takes her up on heat four. Ben Cook seemed to jump up in the air rather than go forward. And it's the Cheetahs duo out front. Cook now has to set about Killeen and see what he can do about him. Nichols out front. Is he going to wait for his partner? Or is he just going to... Killeen's drifted off the line and here comes Ben Cook now. He will take chase, the rider in red after Nichols. Nichols knew that Ben Cook was coming, but Nichols will now attack this track. Max Perry at Boo at the back for the Pirates. It's an all-important race now. Nichols is going to be... You're going to struggle to catch Nichols from here. Ben really trying it, trying every piece of the track that he can. But it's Nichols out front. Made a lovely start from gate four. And never looked to be headed again as he comes over the line. It's white, red, yellow and blue. Oh, he lost last time for First heat advantage of the evening to the Cheetahs. They claw a couple of points back. And there's your heat winner in white, Scott Nichols. Confirmation of the heat result for heat four. It's a win for the rider in white, Scott Nichols for the Cheetahs. He picks up the three points. In second in red was Ben Cook. He picks up a couple. In third was Luke Colleen in yellow. He picked up the point. And Max Perry in blue came in at the back for the Pirates. So the match score after heat four was 14 to the Pirates and 10 to the Cheetahs. Yeah, here we go. The Ben Cook pass move. Colleen just drifted off the line and left a little gap and Ben Cook the pocket rocket only needs a small gap and he can zip through and as you can see we've had four heats now and tractors out leveling out the track grading out the track and Rob Dyer has joined me back here what did you feel about the first four heats there Rob? Well it's great to be back watching Speedway again that's the first thing that uh, struck me and uh, from a Pirates point of view Interesting first race, uh, very quick off the inside gate from Tobias Thompson there, the experience of Sam Masters uh, pegging him back, but uh, Richard Lawson out front looked good, looked nice and smooth, track looked to be riding really well, good start for the Pirates. Uh, then we came to uh, heat number two with Luke Killeen on gate number one, and uh, good flyer away from the gate there for Luke. Uh, Messy first bend between Perry and uh, Baujan, and uh, Baujan just dipped out a little bit on that one, but... Uh, yeah, encouraging signs there for both sides, I think. And then uh, come on to heat number three, and, well, Brennan and Cook are going to be quite formidable in uh, that race during the course of the season at Wimborne Road. And uh, they uh, steamed away to record a four, uh, a 5-1 heat advantage. And then in the last one there, well, you just can't help admire Scott Nichols, can you? Take your hat off to the man, you know, he's been riding a long, long time and he's still class personified and uh, from the outside gate makes a very sweet start. Pegs in uh, with his partner and uh, a little bit of a misfortune for Colleen because he left the gap and uh, Ben Cook was through it like a rabbit down a hole. So we've had some uh, good stuff for only four points in it. Uh, nothing in it as we go to uh, look at the uh, fifth race, which will come up shortly. Yeah, I was impressed with Nichols there because actually for the first sort of like half lap, three quarter lap, he was checking on Colleen's speed and whether he could guide him home. And, and he was trying to, you know, from being in front, look over his shoulder and trying to uh, assess where Colleen, whether he could help him or whether he couldn't. And in the end, he, he took the decision that he probably couldn't. It was best to get out of his way and leave him alone. And unfortunately, like you say, Colleen drifted off the line and uh, fortunate for Ben Cook, he came up the gap. He doesn't need a big gap to go through, does Ben Cook. And uh, hi to Mick and Liz, mum and dad out in Australia. I'm sure they're watching Pirates TV um, at some unearthly hour in the morning to watch their boys. Uh, we're great. It's great to have them back in the UK. Great to have them back in the Pirates race suit. And uh, 
as you can hear the fans absolutely adore them when they're coming to tapes should be proud of those boys and I know you are yeah they certainly established themselves here at Paul as uh, crowd favourites and based with Midlow as they are out there at uh, Stillminster Marshall home of so many speedway riders down the years they're uh, looked after very very well by Neil and Susie and uh, that would no doubt help and be very comfortable in the UK and fulfil all their racing commitments that they're up to yeah absolutely and, and you know you talk about the club and being a, a, a family style club and um, it's just great to all be back together all, the, all of us guys whether you're, you're, you're scraping a track with a with a rake or whether you're chatting on a mic we all get on it's, we're one big happy team here and uh, uh, yeah even Matt Ford's flown in for this evening from France he's flown over specially for this one so uh, it's good to have the big boss around well I'm sure you might be able to grab a word with him a little bit later on dude. you're talking about the uh, family atmosphere in Speedway my opinion is that it's a whole big family, the Speedway family, and uh, although those riders may be representing various teams uh, up and down the country, if you actually get to talk to them, then they know each other, and they know each other well, they travel a lot together, and uh, there's not very many that uh, don't hit it off, and I think uh, if you race a 500cc motorbike with no brakes, you've got to have total respect, and that's something that uh, the, the Speedway family of riders certainly possess. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's right the way through. You know, you, you come in and think, oh, these are two different teams. And uh, you watch the guys chatting to each other before the meeting starts. It's, a, um, it's very similar in darts, to be fair. It's very similar in darts. But darts is much more of an individual sport than, than Team Speedway. And most of the guys all get on. You know, you just can't for the 20 minutes. You've got to play one another. Yeah, well, I'll take your word for that, Scotty, because uh, I'm no hockey fan. But uh, I know... Uh, I know that uh, you know it inside out, so uh, we bow to your better judgment. And uh, with the two minute tap countdown uh, now underway for heat number five, Scott will carry on with the commentary for you. Yeah, as the riders come out, thanks, Rob. Great stuff. As the riders come out for heat number five. Just waiting for the last rider to come out. The pit gate is now shut, so. As the riders approach the tapes. For those new to the speedway, the way that the format works, the riders have to go off of every gate as part of their heat rides. So you'll see them changing gates as the meeting goes on. So heat five, sponsored by Trithowans, a big friend of the Pirates. And at gate one in yellow is Henry Atkins. He failed to score first time out. In gate two in red is Tom Brennan. He won his first ride first time out. In gate three in white is Sam Masters. He also won his first ride out for the Cheetahs. And in gate four, Zach Cook in blue for the Pirates. And he followed his partner home in heat three. Sam Masters having a little dig there, very close to the white line. Our start, Marshall's got his eagle eye. Rob has got his eagle eye on that. If any part of Sam Masters' bike or foot is over that white line, he's asking him to move over and Sam's moved over. So here we go, heat five. It's a beauty off the outside from Zach Cook, but it's also a beauty on the inside from Sam Masters, but Cook goes around the outside of him on the pit turn. Zach gets a bit of a lift on the inside. And now Tom Brennan's having a good look at Sam Masters also. Tom's out there in the dirt, but doesn't seem to be able to get any purchase, but he's making inroads on. Masters makes a mistake and drifts wide. Has that left Brennan up the inside? No, it hasn't. Bit of grip there. Riders have changed setup between races. Brennan looks to have a good one. It's pulling him into the corners. He's going for a big one around the outside. Zach Cook has no idea. He's at the now Brennan's coming up the inside. Masters has left the door open. Brennan comes through. Masters has done the big cutback and trying to straighten, coming up the inside. But it's a magic move from Tom Brennan. And those two, it's blue, red white and yellow as they come over the line the crowd go absolutely bananas Zach Cook out front 
saw none of that. Whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Speedway is back at Wimborne Road. Here comes your heat winner, Zach Cook. How big is this combination going to prove to be for the Pirates over 2024? Here's the confirmation of your heat result. It's a 5-1 maximum score to the Pirates. It's a win for Zach Cook out front in blue. In second, Tom Brennan worked and worked his socks off to get by Sam Masters. He picks up the two points for second. In third was Sam Masters in white. And in fourth was Henry Atkins in yellow at the back. So the match score after five heats is 19 to the Pirates and 11 to the Cheaters. And here we go. Tom Brennan started to pick up some speed there. You can see him coming up the back straight. Sam hits a little patch there of grip and it sent him a little wide, which then gave Tom a bit of hope. Brennan goes round the outside, picking up a bit of dirt, back front wheel lifting off. And he went in big and hard into the turn. Sam stayed on the inside and was spinning and had no grip and there was a gap up the inside and brave, brave move from Brennan. He takes the risk. Master tries to cut back, started to spin up as he cut across the track and it was all about Brennan seeing it out to the line there. So we have a reserve change here in heat six. Ashton Bojan comes in instead of Luke Killeen. So here we go. It's heat six, sponsored by MB Wilkes. In gate one, it's Richard Lawson in red for the Pirates. In gate two, in white, is Scott Nichols for the Cheaters. In gate three, in blue, is Tobias Thompson for the Pirates. And in gate four, in yellow, is Ashton Bojan for Cheaters. Lawson won first time out, Nichols won first time out. Here in heat six, something has to give. And it looks a good one from Lawson on the inside. Tobias Thompson coming up the inside of Scott Nichols as well, gives him a look. Nichols goes high, wide, and handsome is trying to cut back under Lawson. Lawson can see him out of a peripheral vision, trying to get up the inside of him. Nichols goes wide. Thompson tries to dive under again. But it looks to me like Lawson's out there and starting to stretch that lead. But the to Tobias Thompson here is not being dropped off. I'm impressed with this young Dane. Many Danes have come here and rode with the skull and crossbones in the past, Biani and Hans Anderson. But on this occasion, we come to the line. It's the Rocket Man in red, white, blue, and yellow, it's a 4-2 heat advantage to the Pirates. Second win for Richard Lawson, the Rocket Man, this evening. He's really bought his Clayton gloves tonight. Nice wheelie for the fans. Here's the confirmation of your heat six result. 
the 4-2 heat advantage in the favour of the Pirates. In, it was a win for the Rocket Man Richard Lawson in red for the Pirates. In second place was Scott Nichols in white for the Cheaters. In third was Tobias Thompson in red for the Pirates. And in fourth was Ashton Bojan in yellow for the Cheaters. The Pirates stretch the league to a 10 point lead. And the match score after Heat 6 is 23 to the Pirates, 13 to the Cheaters. Once again, Richard Lawson flying from the start. Had a great start from three in his first heat. Unbeaten now. Great start from one. Two minutes is on, so all our riders are coming round to tapes. So here we go. Heat 7, sponsored by Wessex Marine, the team sponsors. And in gate 1, in white is Cameron Heat. For the Oxford Cheaters, in gate 2, in red is Ben Cook for the Pirates. In gate 3, in yellow, is Jordan Jenkins for the Cheaters. In gate 4, in blue, is Sam Hagen for the Pirates. So there's a close up there of our captain Ben Cook. Absolute store at number three last year. Did everything we needed to get from him and alongside his brother, Zach, who was at number four last year. As he is this year, they were a powerhouse. We're already seeing that Tom Brennan and Zach are building that. Ben has gone to heat leader berth, and quite rightly so. Carrying the captaincy on his shoulders as well, which I know he's proud to do. Our riders are in and ready to roll. Our star marshal Rob is ready to roll. Up go the tapes and away we go. Ben slightly missed the start again. It's Cameron Heaps out front. Sam Hagen's having a good go at him in blue and he's still having a go at him around the outside. Jordan Jenkins shows in the back wheel but he's having none of it. And he goes around the outside and Ben Cook comes up the inside. Oh my word, ladies and gentlemen. Get in. Wow, what a passive move. What a passive move. Jenkins was had his eye on Sam Cook around the outside. Uh, Sam Hagen around the outside. Never gave it a thought that Ben Cook could be coming out the inside and the boys go around and one each side. What a move coming back on the turn four. And the boys now starting to stretch the two of them. Ben's now shielding Sam and what would be a momentous win on his first meeting here as a fully fledged pirate in blue. And here he comes, just blue, red, white and yellow. Oh, yeah. Five one heat advantage to the Pirates. But I have to say, what a fantastic move from the two Pirates boys there. Big appreciation for young Sam Hagen there. Wow. Here's the confirmation of the Heat 7 result. It's a win in blue for the new Pirate Reserve, Sam Hagen. He picks up the three points, followed home by his captain, Ben Cook, in red. He picked up a couple. Heaps in third, in white, and at the back was Jordan Jenkins. So the match score after seven heats is 28 to the Pirates and 14 to the Cheaters. I'm sorry, Karen Heaps. I thought I named you Jordan Jenkins just a second ago. Here we go. Heaps has got his eye on Sam Hagen around the outside, and then he looks to the inside, and Ben Cook's always there. Already there. So, yeah, Cameron Heaps had a great start and got out there, but just got mid track and passed by both. Pirates fans absolutely love that. I'm joined again by Rob Dyer. 
And Rob, what a what a race to finish that block of races. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what a block of races it's been for the Pirates. Three heats, 14 points to four in their favour. And they've really turned the screw on the Cheetahs. And uh, it's been done with uh, a bit of good gating and an awful lot of good passing as well. Back in heat number five, there's uh, Sam Masters. So they seem to find a few little uh, humps and bumps in the track, which uh, threw him off course. But uh, it didn't, of course... Uh, uh, throw Trump Brennan of course who uh, executed a great pass there and then we move on again to uh, he six with Lawson again working uh, overtime off the gate to hold off Scotty Nichols and then a double pass there in heat uh, number seven uh, one in one out and uh, the home fans well you know, just uh, up on their feet in the grandstand and uh, you've got to say whether you're a Paul fan an Oxford fan or just a neutral We've had uh, three heats there with uh, great, great speedway. Yeah, I got so excited there. I called uh, Karen Heaps, Jordan Jenkins, yeah. But um, what a move, what a pass, what a night to do it. Massive bumper crowd in and and we, we need to showcase speedway. And that was, that was exactly what happened there. So here's the gate stats. We'll have a look. Um, you would say they're pretty even except for gate two. Gate two doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Three wins off of gate four. We said that gate four looked grippy, and maybe that's what Scott Nichols saw at the start of the meeting and thought it was good, and he took it. So three wins off of gate four, two off of gate three, and one off of gate two off of gate one, and, and nothing yet off of gate two. So is gate two going to be the bogey gate this evening, Rob? Well, looking at it, it could well be, but uh, maybe a little bit early to uh, put some concrete into what we think is going to happen. I was just a little bit interested back there at uh, heat number six where the uh, Cheetahs had gone eight points down. They had Scott Nichols in the heat already. Uh, they pulled a change with Baljan for Colleen. And I just wondered if that may have been tactical time for uh, the Cheetahs to bring Sam Masters in. I know he'd just been 5 uh, 1 in the previous race, but uh, perhaps they're keeping their powder dry for later on. Obviously, that's the case. But 28-14 uh, is healthy for the Pirates. Yeah, here's a scorecard. As you can see, Richard Lawson, six points, three wins from three, two there, two wins from two. And look at all the threes on the Pirate side, and that's why they're leading. You've got to win races, and you've got to have no duck eggs on your scorecard. And if you look at the Pirate side, they've only got one duck egg on the scorecard, whereas the Oxford Cheetahs have a couple on their side but it's always difficult when you're away from home let's not forget you know it's early doors as well the luck guys have been to take too many times other than scott nichols he's been he's been having a few meetings in the last sort of few days but a long way to go in the season and uh yeah we're pleased with what we're seeing here as pirate fans at the moment Long way to go in the BSN Trophy as well. Uh, Pirates are holders, of course, and no doubt wanting to retain that. But uh, with the sad events down at Plymouth in the last uh, week or so, then the uh, schedule for the BSN looks to have been uh, put back a little bit. So we may be waiting longer than expected to find out whether we uh, progress through. But uh, again, we've got to look at the situation overall. These matches do attract an aggregate bonus point and... Uh, Pirates well on the way to building a healthy league to take up to Sandy Lane when the clubs meet again next Wednesday. Yeah, and absolutely. I, th I think this aggregate bonus point is a, is a really good thing, Rob. It keeps the meeting still alive, even when, when you may not be in the meeting, particularly away from home. You're trying to keep the gap as close as you can so that when you get the team back home, you can try and, try and take that bonus point because they are going to be so crucial, particularly in this BSN Southern League, I think. Yeah, it's just the three teams in it, so it is important to get the bonus points wherever possible. Looks like we've got riders uh, just coming back out onto track from the new pit gate, which of course has moved from last year. I don't know if anybody's noticed that. It's just uh, shunted down a little bit because the air fence has uh, also been shunted along. So uh, riders on track on the two minutes, and Scotty's going to tell you who's coming to tapes in this one. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, the, we've got new air fences in on one of the corners for the first for Ben's one and two, and uh, yeah, they they go across the old pit gate. So there was a second gate. There's always been two gates there anyway. So they're now just using the alternative second gate, which is uh, a lot better for the uh, pit marshal because he hasn't got to 
drag an air fence back in as well as the make sure the pit gate is shut. So we've only got 45 seconds left here to get round to tapes and there's a few adjustments being made to a rider in yellow, Ashton Bosian's bike. So, oh no, it's Luke Killeen. So there's been a reserve change again in heat eight. It looks like Luke Killeen is out. A reserve change for the Pirates as well. So gate one in red is Luke Killeen, I think. In gate two in blue is Sam Hagen. In gate three in white. Henry Atkins and gate four in red. Tobias Thomason. Sam Hagen out front in blue again. Being challenged by the rider in yellow from the Cheetahs, which is Luke Colleen. Tobias Thomason keeping Colleen honest. Drifted off the line there, and Tobias nearly got in there. He's taking a big run round the outside now, Tobias. He's going to have to watch on the inside, the rider in red. Sam Hagen out front. All the confidence in the world of what he did in his last heat. He's now right out there and really found a setup here. Colleen looking comfortable in second. The, the race is at the back. Tobias Thompson looks comfortable, but it's going to be a second win. Sam Hagen in blue, yellow, red, and white as they come over the line. Going to be a special debut night for that young man at number six for the Pirates. A win ride. Here he comes, your heat winner, Sam Hagen. Sam Hagen. I'm sure the pool management are absolutely delighted with him thus far this evening. Here's a confirmation of the Heat 8 result. It's a 4-2 Heat score a favour. 4-2 Heat score favour in favour of the Pirates. In first, Sam Hagen in blue for the Pirates. In second, Luke Colleen in yellow for the Cheetahs. In third, Tobias Thomason in red for the Pirates. And at the back, Henry Atkins in white for the Cheetahs. So our match score after eight heats is 32 to the Pirates, 16 to the Cheetahs. As you can see over there, the boss up on there, Dan Ford. Max Perry. Heading into heat number nine, the two minutes, Christina Turnbull is not messing around here. Two minutes is on for heat nine. Our meeting tonight sponsored by Bell's Decor. Another big friend of the Pirates. We can't run as a club without these valuable, valuable sponsors. Look to the Bournemouth Bedding Centre who were sponsored the last heat. I didn't get that one quite out, so apologies to you, but it's out there now. So we have three riders around at tapes. So in gate one will be Scott Nichols for the Oxford Cheetahs in gate two in blue will be Zach Cook for the Pirates. In gate three in yellow will be Sam Masters as a tactical substitute for the Oxford Cheetahs. And in gate four in red will be Tom Brennan for the Pirates. This will be some heat, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Masters not two. quite found his setup just yet, but it doesn't usually take him long. Right, 
Away we go. Heat eight. And it's the Cheetahs up the inside. It's Zach Cook. Managed to get round the outside of Sam Masters. And now Tom Brennan's come up the inside of Sam Masters. Sam Masters comes back up the inside of Brennan. This is good stuff. Zach Cook's drifted off the line a little. Brennan's having another little go at Zach well, at Masters. Zach Cook was having a go at Nichols. Nichols is trying to slow the race down a little. Zach Cook has come up the inside of Nichols. Brennan needs to hold off. Masters at the back who's having a strangely bad night, but it is early season for him. Brennan now taking chase to Nichols. Gaining inroads on him up the back straight. But Nichols is too wily for that, surely. It's blue, white, red, and yellow as they come over the line. It's a 4 2 heat advantage to the Pirates. Zach Cook. Superb in blue for the Pirates. I have to say, the wheelie weren't bad either. So here's the confirmation of your Heat 9 result. It was a 4-2 Heat advantage to the Pirates with a win for Zach Cook in blue. In second, Scott Nichols in white. In third, Tom Brennan for the Pirates, picking up the valuable point in red. And at the back, unusually, Sam Masters in yellow. So the match score after nine heats is 36 to the Pirates and 18 to the Cheetahs. A really good start from Brennan there, but I think Zach got a little bit pushed by Nichols to go out into Brennan's zone and, and, and slowed Brennan up there. So, we head to heat number 10. So this is Heat 10 sponsored by Pirate Cast and on the gate one in yellow is Jordan Jenkins for the Oxford Cheetahs in gate two in blue will be Tobias Thomason for the Pirates in gate three in white with Cameron Heats for the Cheetahs and in gate four in red is the Rocket Man for is Richard Lawson for the Pirates unbeaten thus far Cameron Heaps made a really good start last time and just got caught mid-track and made a slight mistake and got past each side. He looked quicker last time out. He was a little bit unlucky where he got caught on the track. What we all have to remember with Speedway is points make prizes and that's what you get paid on. Nobody goes out there to finish last. So here we go then, Heat 10, sponsored by Pirate Cast. And it's a rocket, rocket start from the outside from Richard Lawson. And now here comes Tobias Thomason making a pass. On Jordan Jenkins, Cam Heaps getting a bit bulked at the back. He looks a bit quicker than Jordan Jenkins, but good move from Tobias Thomason. Jenkins is now having a good go at him. Coming up the inside, Jenkins. Tobias Thomason's gone wide to try and find some grip. This is where the action is. 
to all at second and third. A really nice corner there from Tobias Thomason. Looks over his shoulder, sees that Jenkins is still there behind him. And it's another 5-1 to the Pirates. It's red, blue, yellow and white as they come over the line. Another 5-1 heat advantage to the Pirates. What a start again from Richard Lawson, the rocket man. And yeah, Tobias Thomason coming round, part of his first 5-1 in a Pirates race jacket. The fans appreciate it. <laughs> Bit of a show for the fans from Tobias Thomason. <laughs> Our heat 10 result, 5-1 heat advantage to the Pirates. In first place was Richard Lawson, the rocket man. He picked up three points for the Pirates in second. His partner followed him home, Tobias Thomason. In third, in yellow, was Jordan Jenkins for the Oxford Cheaters, and at the back was Cameron Heaps in white for the Cheaters. So, the match score after 10 heats, it's 41 to the Pirates, it's 19 to the Cheaters. Yeah, big donut there from Tobias Thomason was absolutely lovely. And here's the move. Got in the dirt just on the outside of the pit turn and stayed brave and kept it pinned on, but then managed to clamp it down on the inside to stop Jordan Jenkins being able to sneak back up the inside. It was a good move from Tobias Thomason. Rapidly head into heat 11. Heat 11. Pirates boys are out. You can't wait to get out on track. I suppose you can't when you're 41-19 up. The days when your head's scratching, it's tough to get out there. In what's good. Yep, so the riders are in position. Start Marshall Robs calling the guys in. And away we go. And it's a good start from Ben Cook on the inside in red. He's followed by the two Oxford cheaters in the form of Sam Masters. And Henry Atkins has found something. He's just gone around the outside of Sam Masters. Pirates him, rider in blue. And Sam Hagen goes down at the back but manages to get off the track to let Ben carry on out front. So just the three riders left in the race. It's Ben Cook heading round.
a good quarter a lap in front now of the two Oxford Cheetah boys and Ben looking very quick indeed so it's a win for the rider in red followed by yellow followed by white Ben Cook's first win of the year three all heat score Nice wheelie from Ben Cook coming down through. Unlucky for Sam there, just overcooked it going into turn one. And here's your heat result, a confirmation of the heat result, heat 11. It's a three all heat score. And then the winner was Ben Cook in red for the Pirates. Second was Luke Colleen in yellow. And in third was Sam Masters in white. And failed to finish because he was on the floor uh, Sam Hagen in blue so the match score after heat 11 is 44 to the Pirates and 22 to the Cheetahs we have another track grade where I'm joined by Rob Dyer Thanks, Goody, and uh, yeah, as the tractor comes out to uh, do its thing, and uh, I think we're going to be taking a, an interval at this stage. Uh, it's uh, all very rosy in the Pirates' camp. Uh, it's unfortunate for Sam Hagen there to go down on uh, bend number one there, but uh, good to see him up and clear the track very, very quickly, and uh, he should be applauded for that. And uh, I've got to say, it's... Uh, a lot easier than I thought it was ever going to be. Uh, looking at the teams before the meeting, they looked uh, very well balanced on uh, the uh, strengths. But uh, tonight, well, Pirates in the ascendancy. Yeah, the gate stats have, like you said earlier, have changed. We've got four wins from gate four, two from three. Now we've got two from two and three from the inside. So very even at the moment. If there's any advantage, it's gates four and gate one, which is always good for racing because you can't be off of those two gates. Yeah, but, uh, the inside's normally a uh, favourite here at Paul as the meetings pan out, but uh, with the new surface that's gone down and there has been work done on the starting area as well as on the bends, it'll be uh, interesting to see over the course of the season how the uh, gate situation works out and we'll keep an eye on it as we go through the year and uh, no doubt the pool management will be keeping a close eye on the stats as well to advise their manager and the riders what happens as the meeting goes on yeah because it's a learning curve for all the riders even the riders that have been here before um, with the track surface being slightly different let's have a good look here We've got Richard Lawson He's three out of three wins. Zach Cook's on a paid max as well. Following his partner Tom Brennan home in that earlier heat. Ben Cook's found his feet again and Sam Hagen with his couple of wins. The pool management will be delighted with that. We go to the other side. Masters has been disappointing so far for his four rides. And you have to say Scott Nichols brings everything to the table as he always does. Sat there on seven points. And Luke Colleen at the reserve. We mentioned him earlier tonight. He's been injured the last couple of seasons, early doors, and, and it's affected his progress. And tonight he looks very good. We said a fit Colleen will pick up points at reserve, and that's exactly what he's done. Yeah, quite right, Scotty. If we rewind back to the start of last season in the BSN when the uh, Pirates went to Oxford and uh, won the meeting up there, I think it was 43 47. Luke Colleen was in the cheetah side that night and although he didn't score points he was certainly on the pace and in one race I think he was leading until uh, the bike stopped so a rider with uh, potential and certainly somebody who uh, tonight at least is doing his very very best to keep the cheetahs heads above water yeah absolutely and just panning around the crowd there again down on Ben's one and two and Bumper bumper crowd this evening and they'll be over the moon with the way that this is going for the Pirates. Seen some good heats here as well. 
Yeah, and big Oxford contingent up there uh, on the first and second bend, and I'm sure they're uh, disappointed in uh, what they're seeing, but as we've said so far, it's the first meeting for uh, a lot of these riders, and uh, time, time still to get bedded in, and uh, time to get up to uh, Cowley next Wednesday when the reverse fixture takes place, and no doubt the Cheetahs looking to reverse fortunes when we go up to Sandy Lane and there's no reason why they can't do it it's a super circuit up there now the club management have spent an awful lot of money bringing things together running three teams and uh, improving the stadium and its facilities and uh, hats off to them because they've done an absolutely fantastic job in reviving Speedway in Oxford and uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that uh, in other venues maybe to Wolverhampton or Peterborough or even Coventry, things can uh, be turned around and we see racing again in those strongholds of Speedway. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree there, Rob. Fully agree. It's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we feel that Speedway can be a dying sport, but you look at the crowd here tonight and, uh, we, you know, we have a good travelling contingent as well that will go ahead up to Oxford. There we are from our commentary position. Uh, we're a bit, a bit away. We're a bit away from the. Uh, we're a bit away from the pit, so sometimes we may make a mistake and not in contact with a few rider changes. But we're bringing you all the action, and we enjoy bringing you the action, Rob. Oh yeah, every week, and uh, it's great to be able to, from from my point of view, be over in the pits and uh, see the action, and uh, with uh, Paul, our cameraman. At my side, we can bring you some of the action that, that happens down there and some of the controversy and some of the mechanical changes and also some of the interviews with the riders as uh, they give us their views on how things are panning out over the course of the meeting. And uh, we get some real good snippets from them and uh, they're all a good bunch of guys. They're happy to uh, talk to, the, to me and to uh, others over there and uh, give us their opinion on what's going on. And they uh, don't hold back sometimes. Uh, there are controversies incidents and uh, they might give us uh, both barrels and the bleeping machine comes into play so uh, we have it from time to time unfortunately not tonight but during the course of the season we'll be back over there having a chat with the boys and uh, following the meeting from a different angle he's always on the spot and doesn't miss a thing does our Rob he's right in there yeah. Like, a, like a ferret up your trousers he is he doesn't leave anything to go when he's in there well, thanks he's for our, that. our Roman reporter yeah, thank, thanks for that, Scotty. Uh, you know, it will be a fantastic picture when I get home tonight. And my wife's been watching the stream, and she's saying, "What's all this about ferrets? We know nothing about that." You're never too old to have a ferret. Never too old to have a ferret. Anyway, Rob. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Farmer Mitchell. Not a problem. So it looks like we're on a on a rather large break. Everybody is uh, gone in. All the track staff are gone in. Nigel Lee's at the moment uh, talking to Sam Hagen out on the centre green which is being broadcast around the stadium uh, unfortunately we don't pick up that feed but uh, no doubt he's telling Nigel about uh, what's happened in his uh, earlier rides there and uh, it's an impressive debut for the young man he did I think it was 11 or 12 meetings last year at Birmingham in the championship and uh, it was time the, to, for him to find his feet really stepping up from the NDL but uh, with the uh, expertise that he's got in his corner in the shape of his uh, father and his grandfather and of course Martin Dugard is uh, often at the races and he's here tonight I know uh, advising Sam on the way things are going uh, what a prospect that young man is for uh, British Speedway going forward yeah and I think the pool management must absolutely be over the moon with the way that he started tonight and uh, to get him on a, on a two and and what that's going to do with his partner as well, Max, is going to drive Max on to, to to be wanting to do what Sam does. And they'll talk about setups between themselves and an understanding between themselves. I think um, we look forward we look forward to Sam sort of continuing to produce. Really, I know it's only one meeting, and you you don't win the league after one meeting and one sunny day doesn't make a a great summer. But um, it's impressive from what we've seen so far. Yeah, sure, got to agree with that. Uh, I've got to agree with that, um, Scott. And the other rider who's impressed me tonight, Zach Cook, who uh, who's slowly uh, been developing over the two and three seasons that he's been here at Paul. And uh, from my perspective, when I'm in the pits uh, watching what's going on, Cook is a, a very uh, quiet leader, but one who makes his influence on uh, what's happening. 
Right, we're going to head over now to uh, show you a little bit more footage from a video from a past sponsored by Bell's Decor. And it's in gate one. Scott Nichols, he's yet to have been beaten tonight. He's in white for the Cheaters. In gate two, in blue, is Zach Cook. He's only been beaten once himself for the Pirates. In gate three is Ryan Kinsey for in yellow for the Cheaters. And in gate four is Ben Cook in red for the Pirates. Start Marshall Colin calling them in. Green lights up, the tapes are up and away we go. And it looked like a good start on the inside from Nichols. The Cook brothers are absolutely squeezed up around the outside of Nichols and oh my word! What a move from the Cook brothers! Nichols trying to push Ben a little harder in turn four, but Ben's having none of it. Nichols goes back around the outside. Oh, wow, what a race this is. They squeeze up against the fence. Plenty of racing room there. Zach's out front. Ben Cook has gone back under and kept on the position. Nichols has not given anything up here. Oh, what a super move there from Nichols, but Ben Cook claps the door on him. Brother Zach is out front. Have a look back and see what your brother's doing, Zach. This is all far from over. Nichols has gone wide. The crowd are getting into this massively. Ben Cook's got half a turn to hold on for. Nichols is going to cut back up. But Cook holds on. It's a win in blue for Zach Cook. Second for Ben Cook in red, third and ever trying Scott Nichols who hasn't been beaten this evening. Let's not forget that, ladies and gentlemen. And at the back was Ryan Kingsley. The Cook brothers do it again. Your winner was Zach Cook in blue. The crowd have gone crazy here. Unbelievable. Yeah, super stuff there from a previous meeting. Uh, track marshals are back out on track. We wait for the riders to head out. So while we've got a minute, Scotty, what's your prediction for the championship this year? If you've got a favourite team that you've looked through the lineups and think they've got the chances? Do you know what? I think they're all so even. I think with this 38 point. Mark, I, I think it could come down to who gets injuries, and I know this is really me sitting on the fence really early season, but I think injuries are absolutely vital to the team, and, and I think it's going to depend on who, who has injuries when, really. You know, you don't wish injuries on anybody, but I think that could dictate where it goes this time. It's that tight a lead. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, and uh, I just hope that maybe a couple of the lesser lights, you know, maybe the Scunthorpes or Berwick's come through this year and uh, give the championship another little boost. Yeah, I totally agree, mate. I totally agree. So, here we go. The riders are out for Heat 12. Sponsored by Fry's Electricals Limited. And gate one is the impressive Tom Brennan in red for the Pirates. And gate two in white is Ashton Bojan for the Cheaters in gate three. In blue is Max Perry for the Pirates and in gate four in white is Cameron Heaps for the Cheaters. So riders come into tapes as we come down to just over 20 seconds left on the two minute clock. Colin, our star marshal's happy. And away to go the tapes and away we go. And it's an absolutely lightning start from Heaps on the outside. He clamps it down on the inside. Keeps Brennan in second place. 
Brennan's going high and wide. Try and build some speed up. Pull reserve, Max Perry's there. In second, in third place, holding that down that valuable point. Bojan in white will not give that up. Brennan looks quicker at the front. Brennan looks quicker at the front. Heaps penned down to the inside. Didn't want to go wide. And Brennan again picks a lot of drive up, having to shut the throttle as he goes over the line. This is not over. This is far from over. I think Brennan can now tuck up the inside. And that's exactly what he's done. Throwing it up the inside. Can he hold on to it? Yes, he can. Another red, white, blue and yellow as they come over the line. Another sensational passing move from Tom Brennan. You can see why the Pirates management wanted this young fella. Here he comes. His second heat win in the skull and crossbones. What a move, what a trier. The crowd are going to love this fella here at Wimborne Road. Here's the confirmation of the Heat 12 adult. It was a 4-2 Heat win in favour of the Pirates. And in first place was up with a marvellous, marvellous passing move was Tom Brennan. In second place in white was Cameron Heaps for the Cheetahs. In third, Max Perry in blue for the Pirates. And in fourth was Ashton Bojan for the Cheetahs. So the match score after Heat 12 is 48 to the Pirates, 24 to the Cheetahs. Time Here we go, Brennan building it up around the outside, then tucks underneath. And then it was a case of could he hold the line to get back in, and I'm sure he's getting many pats on the back over there. It's uh, such a shame we haven't got our second camera tonight. We do apologise for that, but we are still bringing you all the on-track action. It's the live bits in the pits that we're missing, the high fives and everything from moves like that from Tom Brennan. We head into Heat 13. This is the ones and the fives. This one's sponsored by Global Heating. And as they come to the line... they come to the line it's in gate one is Sam Masters for the Cheetahs he's had a disappointing night by the way Sam Masters goes gate two is the unbeaten rocket man in red for the Pirates in gate three in yellow is the R charging ever charging Scott Nichols for the Cheetahs and in gate four the new Pirates captain in blue Ben Cook who won last time out Sam Masters just cheering the goggles there. The meeting is over. Pirates have won the meeting. But the Cheetahs now will want to keep the score as close as they can with three heats to go. They'll be looking for a couple of heat advantages here. So that when they take the Pirates back to Sandy Lane next Wednesday, it's more than doable for them to turn the Pirates over and gain that bonus aggregate point. So here we go then. Heat 13 is the big one. And away he goes, Rocket Man off the inside, but alongside him was Sam Masters and Sam gave him a little shove and nearly allowed Nichols back up the inside. Ben's now got Nichols, good test with him. Nichols goes around the outside of Cook. Cook is not shut off, he's gone up back up the inside. Rocket Man has gone up the inside of Masters. Masters has dived back up the inside of the Rocket Man. The Rocket Man's coming back up the inside of Masters. 
Whoa, this is good racing, ladies and gentlemen. Now Ben Cook's having a little look at the inside. Masters managed to shut the door, going back into three. Cook's not letting this one go. The Rocket Man's gone at the front. Ben Cook is still all over Sam Masters. This is not gone, I'm telling you now. He come round to the checkered flag. It's a big one from Ben round the outside. Oh, he makes it. I think he gets up. I think it's red, blue, white, and yellow. I think he makes it. I think he thinks he makes it. We have to wait for confirmation of the score. The pocket rocket absolutely got out of the dirt and twisted that throttle and rode it like he stole it. Does he get up? Does he get up? Does he get up? Yes, he gets up. Yes, of course he gets up. Crowd going absolutely crazy. The Pirates, superb on track. To maximum for the Rocket Man that seems to have been forgotten. Here's the confirmation of the 8-13 result. It's a win for Richard Lawson in red for the Pirates. In second was Ben Cook, and what a ride that was. Half a wheel for him in blue. In third was Sam Masters in white, and in fourth, Scott Nichols at the back. Unusual for him. It's a 5-1 heat advantage to the Pirates. When they head on. So the match score after 13 heats is 53 to the Pirates and 25 to the Cheaters. Well, what a sensational heat that was. I think the crowd has only just managed to sit back down. So we're heat 14. Riders at the line. Sponsored by Maven Properties Limited. In gate one in blue is Sam Hagen. He's on eight points for the evening in gate three. Two is in white is Jordan Jenkins for the Cheetahs. In gate three in red is Zach Cook for the Pirates. And in gate four in yellow is Luke Killeen for the Cheetahs. Luke Killeen is a reserve swap Ashton Belgian. Luke Colleen has picked up good points for the Cheetahs. He's one of their pluses of the evening. We felt this could be the case with Colleen down there at reserve. He's always going to pick up points. That cook there in red. The way that the heats work. It's not often we see Zach in red. Only his last heat. Jordan Jenkins there in white. And gate two wasn't profitable early doors. As the meeting's gone on, gate two's been more popular. Here we go. 14 and away we go. It's a great start from Sam Hagen on the inside. This is the guy that pressed practice day, self-confessed that he doesn't make very good starts. Here comes his partner up the outside, Zach Cook. And will Zach try and see Sam home? Or is it better to get out of Sam's way? Yeah, Zach's gone at the front now, find his line. Sam Hagen is filing. Zach's line beautifully, but he is under pressure from Jordan Jenkins here. Jordan Jenkins giving it a right good go in yellow, in white, sorry. And he's going to go around the outside now. Sam's holding on to the inside. He's just seen Jenkins coming. Moves out. Racing room there going down the straight. Jordan Jenkins goes wide. Sam's been caught mid-track. He hits the slight berm outside turn two on the pit gate. Can he now hold on? He's now found a better line. Jenkins coming up the inside, but it's red, blue, white, and yellow. 
It's another 5-1 heat advantage to the Pirates. Here come your two boys who produced that 5-1. Nice wheelies. So here's a confirmation of the result after heat 14. It's a 5-1 heat advantage in the favour of the Pirates. It's a win in red. For Zach Cook, second in blue for Sam Hagen, third in white for Jordan Jenkins, and at the back, Luke Colleen in yellow for the Cheetahs. And the match score after 14 heats is 58 to the Pirates, 26 to the Cheetahs. Second, backing him up for the maximum win in blue, Sam Hagen. Lovely start from Sam Hagen and there, left the gap, looked over his shoulder. The boy is only 18, let his partner come round the outside. Super, super stuff from him. You can see the boss out there, Dan Ford, all smiles and quite rightly he should be. What a performance from the team tonight. Here's the gate stats, and again, very, very even. Four wins from gate four, three wins from gate three, three wins from gate two, and four wins from gate one. I know Pirates have the pick of the gates in this one. I think they're all fairly even, Rob. Yeah, it'd be a brave man to put their money on uh, who's going where in this one, but uh, as you say, nice to see the way that it's evened out across. Absolutely, here's a quick look through the scores. Obviously, Richard Lawson dominating with his four wins and 12 points. Tom Brennan's had to work very hard for his nine plus one tonight. There's no two ways about that. Ben Cook, nine plus two. Zach Cook, 11 plus one. We can keep going. I've got to say, if, if Sam Hagen doesn't get rider of the night with 10 plus one, I don't know what is. Well, I think you've got seven riders of the night on the pool side. Uh, they've performed uh, exceptionally well. Yeah, Max Perry, look, he comes in on a two average, and, and the number seven, all you ever ask for them to do is their average. We remember we had that a couple of years ago with Nathan Ablett, and he's picked up a couple of points tonight, Max Perry, from his three rides, and fantastic. You know, he's picking up what we, we need him to do. Yeah, he's done his job, and uh, also Tobias Thompson up there at number two, a bit of an unknown quantity to a lot of people, but five paid six is uh, absolutely doing the job, and uh, if he just chips those numbers in home and away, then uh, Pirates will be uh, set sail and uh, have one hand on the championship trophy, or perhaps that's a little bit premature. Very premature, I would say, Rob. Get that ferret back up your trouser leg. I, <laughs> I, would, I, I think that we, we came here with question marks over Tobias. There's no two ways about it. And I think what we've seen tonight is... He's, he's, he's an absolute gutsy trier. He wants to pass people. He want, he's not going to be one of those white line hoggers. And he's he's coming here. He wants to learn. And I think when it, when I spoke to, to to Matt Reed, who's, who's in the pits with him earlier, he said, I think we've got to get him to calm down. He's, it's that king that he sometimes overrides. Well, he's, he's, I was going to say he's a typical Danish rider. But, um, yeah, for a guy who's come in with uh, a very um, average... Um, how do you call it, a average history in, in uh, British Speedway, albeit through a few meetings. Uh, he's done his job tonight and uh, he's looked on the pace. He's looked like he can make a start when it's needed. And um, I'm sure Matt and Danny will be absolutely chuffed to bits with the way that uh, he's turned out to, to represent the Pirates tonight. Of course, the acid test right. comes maybe next week when we go to Oxford. And how will he get around that track? But uh, we'll soon see, and uh, if he could be a, a five-point man right the way through the season, well, Pirates will have done their job. Yeah, exactly. I'm just having a look now, see who we've got in uh, heat 15. It looks like it's going to be Richard Lawson in red. Zach Cook in blue. And quite rightly so with his 11 plus one tonight. Both riders coming to take with uh, maximum score. Richard at full maximum. 
Zach Cook on a paid and Richard on a full. Uh, so quite right to put those two in. Sam Masters goes in white Scott for the Nichols Cheaters and Scott in, yeah. Nichols. I don't think really so Peter Stroke had a great deal of options this there this evening. For Heat 15. No, you're right, Scotty. I don't think uh, Peter Stroke. Uh, had very much to choose from at all there, and uh, the score chart doesn't lie, of course. Luke Clean was uh, probably the uh, one of the picks of the visitors this evening, done very well indeed. Uh, Scotty Nichols battling as always, and Sam Mast as well, just a little bit of an off night for him, but uh, he'll bounce back, and uh, it could well be that next Wednesday at uh, Sandy Lane, he extracts his revenge on the Pirates. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't, but I couldn't agree more. Thanks, Rob, for your input this evening. Sadly, we couldn't have you over in the pits because of our cameraman being down, but I don't think it's lacked with the entertainment, and I've actually enjoyed you being alongside me during the breaks and uh, adding, your, adding your super outlook to Speedway as you do. You're welcome, Scott. Hope you've enjoyed it, folks, and uh, let's go and enjoy this last heat number 15. So we're waiting for Sam Masters to approach the line and they are on the inside. Heat 15 sponsored by Moorish Homes. In gate one, the rocket man Richard Lawson, he's at a 12 point max. Can he hold on to it? In gate two in white is Sam Masters for the cheaters. He's had an off night tonight, there's no two ways about that. He doesn't have many of those, and we won't see many more of those this year, I don't think. In gate three, in blue, we have Zach Cook. What a night he's had from birth number four for the Pirates. And in gate four, in yellow, is the hard-charging Scott Nichols. And he's now right out there under the fence, trying to find a bit of grip. Heat 15 here, nobody has left the stadium. It is still round packed for Heat 15. This Good Friday meeting, the traditional Good Friday meeting has been an emphatic win for the Pirates. And away we go and the Rocket Man has made a good one again. Gets his front wheel up on the grass, looks over his shoulder, there's nobody coming round. So he's now going to have to get head into the sunset if he can and find himself a fastest line round here because he's got nickels all over him Zach Cook is having a little look and riding different lines to see if he can get past Sam Masters but it's the rocket man absolutely flying out front he made that brilliant start and left Nichols is not far off him Nichols is following his line he's learning the line where Richard is going Nichols really out in the dirt. The meeting is over, but Nichols does not know how to give up. Zach is all over. Sam Masters at the back there. We've got two races in one. I don't think Zach's going to get up. He's still giving it everything into the last turn. Mistake from Masters, but it's a win for Maximum Rocket Man. It's red, yellow, white, and blue as we come over the line. It's a three all heat score is your result of heat 15 but the big news is it's hit it's race number one in the championship here at the bsn series for the rocket man the pool number one picks up a 15 point max and is congratulated by the other riders what a night for the rocket man what a night for the pirates So here's the confirmation of the Heat 15 result. It's a win in the, for the rider in red for Richard Lawson. He completes his 15 point max. In second place was the hard charge in Scott Nichols in yellow. In third, the out of sorts, Sam goes. Masters this evening in white. And in fourth was Zach Cook in blue. And well deserved his ride in Heat 15 for the Pirates. So the match score after the completion of the Heat 15, it's 61 to the Pirates, 29 to the Cheaters. I think we have some very happy Pirates heading home. Here's the confirmation of the match result. 61, 
29 in favour of the Pool Pirates. What a start to the year for them. Here come all the boys and it's the bumps for the maximum man. It's the bumps for the maximum man, Richard Lawson. It's great stuff. Great stuff. Hopefully, this is what we're going to see during the rest of the season. Here we go through the team scores. Richard Lawson, maximum man with 15. Tobias Thompson, 5 plus 1. Brennan, 9 plus 1. A good start for him. Zach Cook, 11 plus 1. Ben Cook, 9 plus 2. Sam Hagen, 10 plus 1. Super performance from him. And Max Perry doing his job, 2 plus 1. Sam Masters, 6 plus 2. An off night for him. Emery Atkins struggled from the start. Cameron Heaps, just for three for him. Three for Jordan Jenkins. Scott Nichols, always good for his nine points. Luke Colleen, shining light tonight, I think, for the Oxford Cheaters. He picked up eight points. And Ashton Bojan struggled a little as well. So, as we can see, our Pirates fans leave. And our next live stream of a, of a Pirates match is Wednesday night when we are away to the Oxford Cheaters and you can join that meeting on the Oxford Speedway TV and join their live stream the same as we do here our next home meeting in the BSN Series Southern it's the week after that the 10th of April where the Pirates take on other local rivals, the Plymouth Gladiators. So, as the fans leave the stadium, it's time for us to say goodbye on Pirates TV. Thanks to Paul on the camera. He's been a brilliant job tonight. Some fella. It's called Scott Mitchell. Rob Dyer, brilliant. Nigel Lee here. Stadium announcer Andy Haig, the big boss, in the, producing everything that we see. Thanks to Andy for all his hard work. And we'll see you next time here at Pirates TV. Can't wait to see all of that unfolding.